what's up? This is Thumper, the Shredding Hippie, Shredding Hippie Surf Show. My apologies, I've been off uh, doing a lot of surfing lately, man. And, uh, you know, I haven't been doing the show. But, hey, I wanted to finally get to one of uh, the most, possibly the most popular surfboard uh, in the past few years. And I uh, wanted to review that. But, hey, in case you're new to the channel, man, this is, the, uh, this is Thumper, the Shredding Hippie Surf Show. And, hey, what I do here, man is they talk about, of course, surfing and surfboards and single fins rule and all kinds of other cool stuff. Uh, I've been surfing for a long time, man. I've been around for 40 years. I've been through the whole shortboard revolution. So I've watched all kinds of stuff happen. And, you know, we talk about uh, the different phases of surfing. And, but, you know, what I really like to do, man, is I like to find surfboards that help me surf better. Now, I've been around for a while, I know how to surf, but, you know, I'm not a tiny little kid. I'm not 14 years old. I've been on this planet for a while, and I need a surfboard that will do a few different things. I need a surfboard that will catch waves, that will paddle, and that will help me to shred. That's how I get the name Shredding Hippie, because I still go out there and shred, man. So, you know, there are some things that surfboards have to do, and, uh, you know, surfboards are moving into a really bitching, uh, you know, area, man, where we're finally getting back to our roots, even though you guys don't realize it. I'll discuss that in some other videos. But anyway, let me get back to the review today, man. I'm going to review a surfboard that I've been really stoked uh, and really wanted to surf for a while, and that is... And, you know, this, this surfboard, uh, as I said, is probably the most popular surfboard in recent years and uh, it was you know made by Lost and it comes from the Rocket series right and uh, this is the latest out outgrowth of that series and uh, anyway it's really cool so let me just get to the rating first man the rating of this board that I'm gonna give is this board is pretty bitchin man now you're wondering Thumper what's wrong man how come this isn't totally bitchin well, it's not that it's not a totally bitchin' surfboard. It is, man. And under the right conditions, this board not only shreds, man, it rips. This is an awesome surfboard. The reason I'm not calling it totally bitchin' is because it doesn't fall into the category that I was expecting it to. Uh, I was expecting this board to be an all-around surfboard. And that wasn't my experience. Uh, it is definitely a hybrid surfboard you know, which I like. And so let's talk about, you know, what is cool about this board and how it's made up. As you can see, it's got a nice wide nose to it, right? So that helps with paddling. It's got a lot of volume. Let me just check the volume here. So the volume on this particular surfboard is 6621 and a half by 2.88, 45.40 cubic uh, liters. So this is just right in my range, man, in terms of, you know, what I need to be able to surf comfortably. I need, you know, at least 45, 46 liters. And this board fits right in that category. So it definitely did the job there. Uh, so let's take a look at the bottom of this thing, man. This is pretty cool. I, I love the bottom contours on this board. First, if you take a look at it, you can see that it has a fairly flat rocker. Uh, but there is still some rocker in the nose, which will help you on late takeoffs and uh, doing lots of radical maneuvers and uh, in the pocket and all that kind of stuff. And we've also got some nice rocker in the tail. Rocker in the tail is important because that helps you, in, again, doing maneuvers. I mean, if you want a loose, fun board that you can really, uh, you know, uh, tear around, you want, you want that uh, rocker in the tail. Rocker in the tail tends to be more friendly for front-footed surfers like me. You know, old-school surfing, man, we did a lot of front-foot surfing, so uh, that's helpful for that. And uh, as you can see, the fin setup on this one is a quad tri-fin setup. So let me talk about that for a second. You know, originally the rockets were made just as tri-fins, you know, and people like to have options, so they make them as quads too. But i got to tell you, man, I don't think this board was meant to be a quad. You know, I surfed it as a quad, and I was able to surf it, but in reality, this board really wants to be driven off the tail 
and it really wants to be a tri-fin. So my suggestion, man, is to surf it as a tri-fin. You know, the best way to surf it is, as I said, to, to just plant your foot back there on the tail and just crank from there. Now let's get to why it's not totally bitching. It is totally bitching under the right circumstances, but for me, you know, expectation is everything. So this is important. You know, if your expectations are different, this could be a totally bitching surfboard for you. But my expectation was that this was going to be an all-around surfboard. Um, now, as you know, I have rated the V3 Rounded, which is its uh, younger brother there, which is a step up. And, and that's really what it is. You know, the V3 Rounded is a step up board. But it's, uh, you know, that's an awesome board for head high, double overhead waves, really awesome board. I rated that totally bitching because I had the expectation going into it, man, that that's what it was going to be. And the truth is, you know, that one, if you take it in, you know, shoulder high or less, it just it bogs down. It doesn't, you know, it just kind of, kind of slow and doesn't, doesn't respond very well. I took this board out on a really mushy day. The waves were good size. They were, you know, shoulder, head high, a little overhead. So with that much wave power coming at you, you know, I expected that this board was going to tear it up no matter what the conditions were. But it was high tide and the waves were kind of, kind of flat and, uh, and mushy. And I got to tell you, this board did not perform under those conditions. It was just slow. It just... You know, I ended up doing that bunny hop thing. And by the way, you know, the bunny hop was invented in the 90s. And it was invented because that's when they started doing that elf boot potato chip surfboard thing, man. And, you know, if you've got to do the bunny hop on your board to stay in the wave, either the wave doesn't want you to surf it anymore or your board just is way too small for you or for the condition. You know, what we used to do back in the day, man, in the 70s, is that if a wave was slow, we never entered our mind to do that stupid bunny hop. But because the boards were made a little different, we would climb up to the nose and we would paddle, you know, squat down and paddle back into the wave. And if the wave didn't want us, we would just give up. So you'll never see the shredding hippie ever doing that stupid bunny hop. And I, there are guys out there, you know, that, that are learning on these big giant fun boards. And for some reason, they got it in their head that doing that stupid bunny hop is some kind of radical maneuver. It's not, man. You look ridiculous. Stop doing it. You got a fun board. You don't need to do that bunny hop. Anyway, that's just uh, a little bit of, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, I have no idea what's going on right now, man. Oh. Anyway, man, so, you know, this uh, surfboard is, uh, is definitely... Uh, a pretty bitchin' board, and I would say the best condition for this board is waist high is a little small, but you know you start waist high to a few feet overhead. You start pushing double overhead, and then you need you know the V3 round it. But it's a really good medium to you know um, larger wave surfboard, uh, especially if the if the wave has some pitch to it. And it's got some barrels going on. This board, now this board does kick in uh, when that happens. And, and when I got, uh, took this out on some waves that were like that, this board really kicked in. It was really fast, really precise, really fun. I mean, it was a precise piece of machinery, man, a, a precise piece of technology, you know. And so it's everything that you could expect. But, you know, don't expect to take it out on flat summer days and expect to tear it up. It's just, you might as well just be on your long, you know, your long board or, you know, your fun board like that one. You know, that's my summer fun board right there. And, uh, you know, the day that I took this out, and even though it was uh, head high, even though it was uh, mushy, I was really wishing I had that instead of this. And so, you know, just bear that in mind, man. But, you know, hey, while I'm on the subject of all around surfboards, the board that I could have had, which would have been a lot of fun on that day, would have been this one, man. This here is, as you can see, Shredding Hippie surfboard label, right? Shredding Hippie, that's me. And this board was uh, created for, you know, the reasons I was just talking about. I needed an all-around surfboard that was going to do what I wanted. And so what I did was I took... The basic idea of the Hayden Shapes Hypto Crypto, and by the way, had it not been for them, I wouldn't have even started my own label, but I'll tell that, I tell that story in other videos. But, uh, 
So uh, you take the basic idea of the Hypto Crypto, maybe throw in some uh, stuff of the Rusty Dwart or uh, the CI Biscuit, and this is what you end up with. With also the benefit of five fin setup, you can either write it as a quad or as a single fin, or as kind of like what I'm doing here, I've made myself a little uh, homemade bonzer. I've taken a couple of those little nubsters and I put it up here with that, so I've got myself a bonzer. Man, this thing, this thing is really more than just an all-around surfboard. I mean, it'll handle just about any conditions, um, and, you know. And because I have so many options with the fins, I can take it out on a super small day, or I can take it out when it's you know pushing way overhead. And you know, there are things that I can do. You know, especially like if I want to ride it like a single fin, I just push the single fin all the way back, and then I can take off on some deep, big, gnarly waves. If it's really small and I'm still doing a single fin thing, I can just push the single fin all the way forward. Or I can do the whole quad fin. Or, as you know, you can get like a, a little adapter and you can make yourself a regular tri-fin. So you've got, you know, actually like six, seven, eight different fin configurations for this guy. And uh, anyway, man, I've had a lot of fun on this board. This board has exceeded my expectations about what I wanted for it. So if you wanted one of these, man... You can go on uh, to the website and you can uh, buy one of these yourself, man. So, uh, so you know, that's it for the, this installment of the Shredding Hippie Surf Show. Uh, so, listen, next one, uh, keep your eye out for because I'm going to now start talking about how to surf single fins. What to expect from a single fin, uh, how to use your single fin, um, how to surf it and get the most out of it. There's a difference between, you know, if you've ridden a single fin fun board or long board and you think you know what a high performance single fin is about, I got some news for you. You don't. It's a totally different animal. So we'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, man, that's it, man. This is uh, the Shreddy Hippie review for the V3 Rocket, man. And hey, uh, winter's coming soon. So get out there, man, and uh, stay the hell off of my wave. But uh, come out and surf and let's have some fun. Until next time, man, this is the Shredding Gifty saying, Shred for the day.